Hi everyone and welcome to another Tutorial Bucket Tutorial. What we're going to look at in this tutorial is how to create what's called a Tilt Shift Focus Effect. What does this effect do? Well, take a look at this. Isn't that amazing? It's a really simple effect but it can take your image and make it look like it's a small tabletop model. Now, word of warning, there are certain images that this will work better on. So please note the sort of image I'm using. It's taken from a distance. It's got a pretty panoramic view of a wide area with lots of details in it, which helps it. But you can try this on any image just to see the effect. But if it's going to look convincing, this is the sort of image at this sort of angle, looking down slightly, is going to give you the best effect for faking that tabletop miniature look. OK, here's what we need to do. I'll just drag over my layers palette. And I need to take a copy of my original image. So I'll just drag it down to my new layer icon and my layer palette. And I'll just rename this one. And I'm going to call this one Blurred Layer. This should give you a clue as to where we're going with this. We need to also lay in a layer mask on the Blurred Layer. So I'll just click on my layer mask icon. Voila, one layer mask. And we are just about ready to do the magic. We need to do, first of all, a gradient inside of our masked area because we're going to decide on which area is going to be in focus and which areas are going to be blurred out to create that model-like look. So I need my gradient tool. Now the type of gradient that we're going to use is called a reflected gradient. It's this one here. It doesn't get used very much, but in this case it does a great job. Next thing we need to do is check our colours. Our gradient has to be a black to white gradient. So the normal setting for your colour picker on your palette here is white to black. Reverse that. Click on the little double arrowhead. Get it so black is foreground and white is background. And if you know your keyboard shortcuts, you can just press the X key. That will also reverse this as many times as you want. OK, so gradient selected. Black to white. I come into my image and just draw up a vertical line about so high for this particular image but you can fool around with this endlessly and I've got my mask ready with the reflected gradient in place and now we do the magic we go over to the image that's to be blurred and I click on its thumbnail this activates the image it's very important we need to blur the image not the mask go to the filter menu and from the Blur menu, I'm going to choose Lens Blur. You can use Gaussian Blur if you're not using CS3 or CS4, but Lens Blur does give a slightly nicer effect. But Gaussian Blur will do the trick as well. I'll just open up Lens Blur. And we can see the Lens Blur interface. And it shows the entire thing blurred out and looking pretty unusable. Now here's why I like using the lens blur instead of Gaussian blur. You can use this option called depth map and I just want to use the existing layer mask that we put in place to form the basis of the depth map. Now the depth map is going to control the focus areas. Now it starts to make a little bit more sense. If I increase the radius this effectively increases the amount of blur, so it can be quite extreme. But I'd keep it somewhere around about between 15 and 25. That generally does the job. But evaluate this yourself. I'll exaggerate this a little bit just for the sake of fun. And also for you YouTube viewers who are watching already very blurry video, this will make the difference between the two seem quite clear. But as I said, you can use a straight Gaussian blur and it will give you an effect that is almost as good. And we say OK. Just drag that down so you can see it. OK. And there's the effect in place. I'll just turn this off for a second. Hmm, not bad at all. It's quite an impressive effect, but it might need some fine tuning. Now, the fine tuning for this is very simple. Just bring back my layers palette. And it's on the mask layer. If you find that the blurring doesn't look quite right or it doesn't seem to balance out correctly, you might just simply need to balance out the masking area. And you can do that with the gradient tool again. So I'll just draw a slightly bigger one, a slightly little bigger reflected gradient. And that gives a little bit more of the area in focus. If you need it tighter, just make it shorter. 
and you narrow it up so you can do this according to taste until you find the right balance between focus and blur. I'll just put this back to where I think it should be, somewhere around there I think looks pretty good. Remember, these settings are for me. They're different from image to image. Okay, next thing we want to do is we need to give the colours some pop. It's impressive already, but now you need to try and sell this as a tabletop miniature. The easiest way of doing this is to bump up the colour saturation so it then gets that toy-like quality. So, back to our layers palette, and we're going to drop in a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And from the hue and saturation adjustment layer, I'll just bring in my settings for it so you can see the settings. Yes, I am using CS4. It is a little bit different, but the functions are identical if you're using any version earlier than CS4. It's exactly the same procedure. Now, I'm just going to increase the saturation up to around about 38, 40, somewhere around there. Again, judge this on the image. Don't just take my settings. Look at the image. You want the colour saturation to be up as pretty much as high as you can get so that the colours start looking very, very artificial and more like a toy. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go along with those. I reckon that's a pretty good setting. Just pull this one out here. Take away my layers palette. And there is the finished product.